are searching and searching for this. It is audible and you can't hear anything. Where is it? Where is it coming from? Where is it hiding? Why is it hiding? In her 31 years, Danielle has gone from being a mute, believe it or not, mute, mm -hmm. to discovering and unleashing her voice. Although it took this many years to find, Toastmasters has helped Danielle push through the uncomfortable and share vulnerable stories that became speeches. Danielle's speech will piece many of her past speeches together in her second icebreaker, she is, she, she, as she reluctantly joins Pathways. <laughs> Danielle's speech is titled, Finding My Voice. It will be four to six minutes. Please welcome to the lectern, Danielle Boyce. <laughs> to an abusive alcoholic father who didn't want a daughter, and to a mother who couldn't love or care for her children because of her own mental instability. This made me a very independent child. I found more satisfaction, gratification, and happiness being in school rather than being at home. In school, I learned that I did have a voice outside of the house. I could stand up for myself and for my friends. It was up to me whether I allowed the voice of others to affect me and change the way that I felt about myself. I was able to make their voices feel small. I was also in control, something I so desperately wished I could take home with me. At home, there was no inside voice. <laughs> there was yelling and screaming and a lot of fear. I spent a lot of time by myself, in my room with the door shut and in the woods behind my house, where the only noise you could hear was the rushing sound of the creek. I like to hide, and I really love to run away. Usually when I was running away, my friend's parents would take me back home. One time I remember hiding in the dirty laundry basket of the bathroom closet. My brother came in to take a shower and I was so nervous that he was going to find me and tell my mom, which would then cause me to get in trouble, but only because I was actually being noticed. When he opened the door, my head was covered by dirty towels and I held my breath. So when he put his dirty towel on the top of my head, he had no idea I was inside. I stayed there overnight, and the next day I had to sneak out because I was so hungry. Nobody noticed I was gone. I felt like if I was quiet and I went unnoticed, it was what <coughs> I was supposed to do to stay safe, and I preferred it that way. I remember my dance teacher asking, Danielle, are you always this quiet at home? You're so quiet in class. I vividly remember my school teachers asking similar questions like, Danielle, is there something wrong today? Is there something I can, get, I can do for you so that you're, you're speaking in class? My biggest nightmare was to raise my hand. I hated speaking in front of the class, getting up and presenting anything. It was my biggest fear. This all changed in fifth grade. In fifth grade, my dad, who was usually the one that I was hiding from, was diagnosed with ALS and his voice started to disappear. For the first time, it was safe enough for my voice to appear. 
I became a social butterfly. I was talking in class and even getting in trouble for it. In dance, the teacher had to separate me from my friends. I discovered my voice. The next year, my best friend and I started writing our own songs. We would lock ourselves in our rooms and we would write songs about the daily drama of being 12. <laughs> One day we were even brave enough to share our voices in front of our music class. Our music teacher pulled us aside and he said, I'm looking to form a group that I can mentor and you would perform in front of the school and the city at certain concerts. Of course, we were jumping for joy, thinking that we were going to be famous. So he looked for the third counterpart to join our trio. We rehearsed every morning. Our music teacher picked us up every day before school. And most days, we also stayed after school, where we were rehearsing holiday classics and Motown hits in three-part <laughs> harmony. We named ourselves the Candy Kiss Kids, because we loved Hershey Kisses so much. <laughs> It was clearly our inspiration for the name. I was finding my voice. In high school, I was brave enough to speak in front of our class of 500 and persuade them to vote for me as the student government class secretary. Outside of the house, I had a voice. But inside of the house, it was a different story. My father was now voiceless for several years, which caused my mother's voice to become more angry and violent. She was so un unpredictable that sometimes we would come home and we didn't know if she would throw something at us, if she would rip my hair out, if she would kick us outside in a blizzard without <coughs> clothes or shoes. We would call the police almost every day. They showed up and they never believed our voices. Our mother's voice was always overshadowing ours. And our family never believed us either. My mother's control issues were so toxic that she didn't want to care for us, but then she wouldn't allow us to go into a foster home, and she wouldn't allow our, par our friend's parents to adopt us. She was so controlling that I remember the day I was brave enough at 16 to just risk it all and show up to her face and just say, I'm leaving the house, I'm moving in with friends, and if you do anything about it, you'll never see me again. And because she was so, she had so much pride about keeping me in her conflicted world, she actually didn't say a word because in her world she wasn't losing me and nobody else would know that I wasn't living there. When I was 18, I went off to college and this was my freedom call. I was able to escape the house and I knew that once I left, I never had to look back. I never did. They have never seen me since. Then when I was 22, I was able to really get free when I was leaving Massachusetts and coming to Wilmington, and this was my safe haven. I was able to choose where I lived. I was able to create and choose my own family. I could choose my happiness, and I wasn't bound by fear. I wasn't bound by violence. And there was so much peace and quiet. As an adult, my voice was starting to be overshadowed by the voice of my inner child. I saw this in my relationships because my boyfriends were the one witnessing my trauma. But it wasn't bad enough for me to get help until I met my fiance, JP, four years ago. JP also grew up with a violent mother. She had bipolar and she was unmedicated during his childhood. so. He also came home with the same unpredictable, not knowing what's going to happen, fear, violence, yelling, screaming life that I grew up with. What was happening was that my voice in, as my inner child was 
looking for its moment to come out because it was now safe to. So it was overshadowing my adult voice. And because my triggers were so profound, they were triggering his triggers. So now I had a real problem where my problems were causing other problems for him. So at this point, I knew that I had to get help and I was diagnosed with PTSD. I was also diagnosed with disassociation, which meant that in many of my childhood memories, I was outside of my body seeing myself being abused or um, as a child victim. <clears throat> so it took years for me to even realize that I had a problem. Actually, it took decades for me to realize this. And once I healed myself from these traumas, I was able to actually find my voice. For three decades, my voice was in the midst of my childhood. It was hiding behind fear. It was hiding behind violence. It was hiding in the laundry basket of my bathroom closet and in the suitcase <coughs> under my bed and in the woods where the only noise that was peaceful enough for me to stay around was the rushing water of the creek. I feel that I finally found my voice. Can you hear it? <laughs>